right, everyone, we have Coach Adams, Bryson Williams, and Adonis Arms here. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach. Coach, whenever you're ready. Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, we want to <clears throat> um, really congratulate Duke on a great game, great second half, a very, very good team, and, uh, and obviously very well coached. So, you know, this is a tough time for us. Your, your season ends. There's a, I think there's a Bible verse that says you, you know, you mourn with those who mourn and celebrate those who celebrate. And we're going to have a lot of time to celebrate. This has been an unbelievable year, but I've got a lot of guys tearing up in that locker room. And so this is a time that we'll, uh, we'll mourn a little bit. But I uh, love these guys. So blessed that I had the opportunity to coach them. And I uh, wish I could coach them another game. But uh, I just can't express, you know, how much I appreciate the work habits and and uh, how coachable these guys are, how much they love each other, the family atmosphere that we had. And it was just so enjoyable for me. And uh, this will be a team that I'll uh, always remember. And they had a great year. We, we broke a lot of records. And so, and these are is responsible. Some of these guys who are up here with me are largely responsible for that. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get through tonight. Questions? Start up here in the front. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Um, Bryson, they made eight, eight, all of their last eight field goals. I guess just how hard was it to stop that kind of train defensively when it was going like that? Uh, I mean, they. I mean, when you play in a team like Duke, that's. Uh, I mean, has such so much firepower on the offensive end, and uh, a lot of guys that can do uh, a lot of great things on the floor one on one. I mean, it's always going to be a hard, hard to stop. Uh, those guys had momentum going into the end of the game, and they took fully advantage of it. So, um, I mean, just hats off to them. I mean, they played great on the offensive end towards the end of the game. Question to the left. This is for Coach um, Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. I'm curious what your, your impressions of what you saw from Banchero tonight and, and how much he hurt you guys in some of those spurts. <laughs> Well, I mean, he's a great player, and you know, our uh, scouting report, our preparation was all about not uh, giving him as many touches. Uh, you know, he's not a great three-point shooter on paper, but he he proved that he can really shoot it tonight and made a lot of big plays for him. So uh, we were trying to not let him catch the ball. Talked about there in timeouts, but uh, you know, great players find a way to get the ball and and make the big plays, and he certainly did that. Next question to the right. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Adonis, uh, obviously you guys were able to make it close later on. Can you just speak to the fight this team has had throughout the year and what the message is or just kind of what the story is of this team? I know it's right after, but I guess what, what can you kind of put into words is what the story is of this team that got put together so quickly and made a special run? I mean, <clears throat> in my opinion, we got the best coach in college basketball to my right. So when we follow his lead and list everything he has to say when it comes to, you know, fighting and never wanting to lose, like hating to lose and stuff like that. And then you get a full team like myself and Bryson, that's a bunch of veterans coming in to actually buy into that and believe in each other and love each other and, you know, just want to win every single possession, every single game and hate losing. I mean, all credit goes to Coach Adams. I mean, his, his mindset, his like every day of, you know, watching film, breaking it down to the smallest thing and we actually buy into it. There's no clicks or anything like there's, there's none of that on this team. So I just think it hat goes off to Coach Adams, you know, for, for him to lay down on the table and for us to, you know, buy into it and love him as a coach and a person at the same time. It's, I mean, in my opinion, it's the greatest team I've ever been on. So, I mean, I love these guys. I'll never forget them, especially Coach Adams. He's probably my favorite coach I've ever played for. So that's how I feel about it. Question on the left. Mason Hordisky from KMAC News. For both of you guys, uh, kind of to bounce off of that, with how quickly this team was assembled and how you guys came from all different walks of life, what made it so easy for you guys to kind of latch on to each other and the rest of your teammates and Red Raider culture? I mean, just reiterating what uh, Donna said, I mean, like, I mean, Coach Adams, I mean, he's one, he's the greatest coach in the country. Uh, for him to be able to pull a group of guys together who were all the men at the previous institutions, and just get us to buy in and believe in team and uh, make us love playing defense. Um, I mean, that's I mean that's special. And then also, um, I would like to say the Texas Tech. I mean, Texas Tech. I mean, this is the institution to love and to support. 
and just the way the fans and everybody was just behind us and um, everybody that's involved with Texas Tech and um, just, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, it was a blessing to be here. Uh, it was a blessing for all of us to play here. I'll remember these guys for the rest of my life. I'll remember Coach Adams for the rest of my life and everybody on that coaching staff, every manager, every GA, um, even the janitors that work at Texas Tech, I'll remember them. So, I mean, um, it, it was just a blessing to be here. And, uh, I mean, we fought hard. And that's all, that's all we're going to do always is fight hard. Question in the middle. Hey, guys, Brady King, Fox 34 in Lubbock. Coach, hearing that from your players, you're clearly very, very loved. How does it feel to hear that? And can you just sum up how special your first year as a head coach at Texas Tech has been? Yeah, well, y'all just uh, y'all get a small taste of what I get to enjoy every day with these guys. Uh, they're really, they're, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and, and this is a team that um, really loves the game and uh, plays a lot of motion and they love each other and they laugh a lot and they and that same emotion they is they're so competitive when they need to be and and it was just a joy to coach and our coaching staff is so thankful and i'm just so blessed that god's put me in a situation and put these guys in my life and and uh you know i'm i don't think i'm deserving to have these guys but i'm so thankful that i was able to coach these guys and the, and the rest of them and on this team just very special and yeah, you know, I'm just so sad that we have to, you know, uh, see this season come to an end because we want to keep, you know, we want to keep playing. So, uh, you know, we just we just uh, love love competing together, and we love being in the same foxhole and going out and fighting together. Question on the left. Yeah, this this is for Adonis, uh, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News. Uh, when they switched to zone, um, were you surprised by it? It seemed like you guys hit it really hard early, and then. Uh, they adjusted a little bit. Could you sense the adjustment, and did that is that what caused you guys the problems a, a couple, on a couple of possessions that, that changed the game there? Um, <clears throat> I mean, they they have a Hall of Fame coach and Coach K over there, so he was trying to find a way to, to slow us down because we were scoring, giving the ball to Bryson and just attacking their gaps or their their zone. But I think um, that the hat goes off to Kevin McCullough for that for that call, um, noticing that they were switching from man to zone, man to zone quickly, and then me recognizing it and getting us in our sets. Um, I just think if if we would just recognize it a little quicker, we will have been fine. But uh, it was a great adjustment from Coach K. Um, I mean, I have all faith in my team and my, and my guys to, to figure out what play we need to run and stuff like that. But I mean, it just, that was basically it. Question in the back left. Oh. Question up front here. Mason Ordisky with KMAC. Uh, Coach, just kind of looking back at the beginning of the year and where the team was in last spring and where they obviously end the season now, uh, can you just reiterate, I guess, how proud you are of how they were able to fight through adversity and even make it back to this position when a lot of people maybe have counted out the Red Raiders early on? Sure. I mean, you know, you start looking at <clears throat> some of the critics and the polls, we weren't, uh, you know, we, we weren't expected to do very well. But I think, the, you know, simply put, we just had a team that exceeded all expectations. And the credit goes to the, these guys and, and our coaching staff for putting together the right guys that, that would fit here and, and uh, that wanted to uh, play defense and, and wanted to, uh, you know, play for each other and sacrifice a lot of individual uh, maybe goals that to, for the betterment of the team. So, but it, uh, yeah, I thought it was this, it's an unbelievable year. It's just a team that was just uh, reached uh, all kinds of heights and no one ever thought was possible. We'll go to the right for the final question. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Adonis Bryson, this is for both of you. What do you feel y'all have left as a legacy for this team? Because I know certainly they've been on the uptick getting to the Elite Eight National Championship game, but you guys have obviously made your own path here. What do you feel each of you, if you can just answer personally for yourself, that you've left as either this team or just as an individual? Um, I would say that we left uh, that the culture works, um, that if you believe in what Coach Adam says every single day and you take it to heart and you fight every single game, you're going to be every, in every single game. Um, I think the legacy that I left for myself is, I mean, it's what I started with when I started to play basketball was never quit, never give up, and believe in God first. So um, that's always going to be my legacy. That's I think, I think that's what I left here at Texas Tech. 
And uh, again, I just want to credit Coach Adams for giving me the opportunity to do that. Um, I would say uh, this team left uh, the legacy of you know hard work, um, hard work, and uh, just coming in every game and knowing that uh, you could lose to anybody, you know. And uh, preparation is key. Uh, I mean, we I feel like uh, this team. I mean, we prepare for everybody that we play against just to a T. We spend multiple hours in the hotel rooms and. Uh, um, at the gyms, um, at uh, in our practice facility. I mean, just preparing for people that we play. So how important preparation is, and just being ready to fight. And then um, I would say individually. I mean, the legacy I'm trying, I was trying to leave here is uh, that. Uh, I mean, if you want, if you got, there's anything you want to do, you got to work for it, and you got to go get it. And uh, that's why I love so much about Coach Adams. He's the same way. I mean, he you he, he wants something, he's gonna go get it, or he's gonna go take it. And I felt like. Uh, that's what I love to see. I want to leave is leave it, leave it all on the floor, go take it, and uh, and um, having a strong faith in God, of course. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. As a reminder, a recording of this press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub and we'll have transcripts for you shortly.